Okay, this was supposed to be a quick thing, but I've had to redo this intro like 20 times. I'm not even joking. I'm questioning if this is gonna work, but I'm gonna try. <sighs> Hello. <laughs> Welcome to episode 11 of Novel Knits. My name is Danelle, and this is my YouTube channel where I talk about what I'm knitting, what I'm reading, and any other crafty things that I'm getting up to. <laughs> There we go, I did it. I am coming to you from my basement in southeastern Wisconsin where I live with my husband, our two kids, our dog Penelope, and our betta fish, Aang. It's actually my daughter's betta fish, but details. <laughs> um, if you wanna find me anywhere else, um, I am on Instagram and Ravelry as Novel Knit Girl, all one word. And yeah, I'm not, I kind of feel like I'm not very good on Instagram. I definitely don't do any reels. I definitely only post once or twice a week, but I feel like whenever I have something to share, I always do. I just don't, my life's not that interesting, so I do what I can. Um, but welcome, I'm so glad you decided to join me today. I have a lot to talk about and I'm going to try to power through today. The last couple of episodes I've tried um, recording in different time slots um, just to give my mouth and my brain a break because I don't really talk very often for long periods of time so sometimes I trip on my words a little bit so I'm gonna try my best to get through this but it's been a rough start and I had actually recorded yesterday but there was so much noise going on where I usually where I had been recording before by my computer and my yarn behind me that it was like really distracting my watch kept going off my phone was going off my computer was dinging and it was I should have just turned everything off and then started to record, but that would have been smart and I didn't think of that. So anyway, I have a quick vital few today where I'm just going to talk about a prize that I won and the mystery knit along by Stephen West. And then I have two finished objects. I have a bunch of works in progress and a very quick book club. So I'm going to try to power through, but you know, keep things calm today. And I'm sorry that I seem a little off. This was just... I mean, the comedy of errors that was happening here for the last 10 minutes kind of threw me off a little bit. All right, so I entered a knit along on Ravelry for Piece for Piece Crafting and I won a prize. And I know like a lot of us will enter knit alongs, not really expecting to win a prize just because it's fun to be part of the community. And that's sort of what happened here. So I was thrilled that I won a prize, especially from Michael, cause he's so cool and I really enjoy his podcast. So if you're not watching the Peace for Peace podcast, Peace for Peace Crafting, I believe, Michael, he lives in Chicago and he is a fantastic knitter. He knits beautiful shawls. He just finished a great sweater and, um, he makes me laugh every single podcast that he does. And he also gives music recommendations, which isn't really my thing, but he's got like a Spotify list that people can add to. And I think it's really cool. Um, but yeah, so he's cool. So check him out, but I won a prize. So I was so excited. He sent me this great skein of fiber punk yarn and neons are not always my thing, but this is great. The color is called pop and it is a self striping yarn. Effect. And let's see, it's 75% non-muesling superwash merino and 25% nylon. And it is so soft. This is going to be great on my feet or my daughter's feet, but probably my feet because I'm selfish. <laughs> and then um, he also sent, which was so, so nice. I mean, I had no idea what I was getting. I, um, it was like a, your languishing whips type of knit along. So I entered my, um, wave of change jacket because that had been very languishing for me and I was really excited when I finished it and I was like oh this is great it works out really well that I could enter it um so I had no idea what the prizes were but then this awesome bag came too I mean it is so big <laughs> and this bag is by Sassy Sacks and it's just got this really pretty brown lining on the inside so big I've no I mean I love big bags <laughs> a lot it's got this great handle on the side it's really cool and I don't have any autumnal bags so I was really excited to see that and um I love how hard this gift clashed I mean that's awesome too and so he also sent in the package some tea um, a vanilla sachet like that a smelly thing and then um 
and some chocolate. And it was the exact same chocolate that I have at my house. So I was just laughing really hard at that too, because um, I was like, we must have the same sweet tooth because it was like peanut M&Ms, M&Ms, Twix, and Snickers. <laughs> And they're gone already. So thank you, Michael, if you're watching. I really appreciate it. Okay, so I will be showing later on in the episode my Stephen West mystery in a long shawl. I am currently on clue three. And I told you in our last, uh, my last episode, I said, I think I'm going to do it. I had my yarns. I decided to do it. As a process knitter, I love every second of it. It's so fun, especially the beginning when the rows aren't so long. Um, the one thing I will say about a Stephen West shawl like this is you always learn something new. You always learn a new technique. You always, you, you learn so much. And um, you're definitely doing stuff here that I've never done before. In I don't know what I said before, but I actually finished clue two, I'm on clue three. And clue three does have some brioche. I've never brioched before. I've decided I'm not going to start with 415 stitches. Um, I think I'll do it in a smaller project and then maybe next time I will do brioche. But almost everybody that I've seen is doing brioche and it looks really good. I know I could do it, I just sort of don't want to. <laughs> so he gives an alternative to the brioche and I will be doing that. But I have to figure out my stitch count first because I think I'm off and before I start the next section I want to figure out how I'm going to adjust my stitch counts. So anyway I am happy with it. As it's coming along though I am wondering if I will wear it. And I'm actually okay if I never do. I mean it's kind of going to be a showpiece for me and maybe something I'll wear if I ever go to a fiber festival, like to a fiber festival or something, but it's a lot of fun. And I thought I picked a really neutral <laughs> palette, but you'll see when I show it, like it, it's not as neutral as I thought it was. So anyway, I'm having fun with that and I'm excited to show you, but let's go into my finished objects. So the first one that I, I will show is, uh, sorry awkward reach. I finished my simple skip socks and I love them a lot. So these are, um, the, it's SKYP. So I think it's skip and not Skype and it's by Adrian Koo. And the yarn I used is Yarn Cafe Creations Herbiscotti base in Selkie. So if you look, you can really see there's a really neat like ribbed texture on there with that skip stitch. I love these. I did the called for heel flap and gusset. I'm doing a lot of heel flap and gussets lately, which is okay by me. It's, I think they fit really nice. And I think I said last time that these are a little tight on me and they are not at all. So they're definitely for me. My daughter's not getting them. And I like how there's a lot more saturation to the speckles on this sock than on this sock. I just think they turned out great. I'm super happy with these. Um, probably the happiest I've been with a pair of socks in a while. And not that I haven't liked the socks I've been knitting, but everything about these just make me really happy. So they're done and I'm tempted to wear them now, but I think I'm gonna keep them in my little drawer and give them to myself for Christmas with all the other socks that I've been knitting. And then the second finished object I have is the Slipped Rib Cowl by Jody Brown. And for this, I used a set from Lady Dye Yarns. Um, the gray is called Chadwick and the cream is called Timeless. This is a really easy, simple pattern, easy to memorize. I like held my breath when I did that. <laughs> Um, I really think it turned out nice. This is going to be for my mom. I think I'm going to give it to her for Christmas. Um, she was watching me knit it at baseball games for my son. And she's like, oh, I could use a new cowl. So fine, fine. You can have it. You can have it. So it's really nice. I didn't love knitting this and it wasn't because of, of the pattern or the yarn. I think it was the needles that I used. They were just, they kind of hurt my hands a little bit. Not a lot but enough to make it like not enjoyable. 
So I'm gonna have to figure that out for future because I, I plan to make some more cowls this year because I need one too. Um, and I have a lot of patterns to choose from that might be on a different needle size. Um, but this turned out really nice. So I think I'll give it to my mom for Christmas. Inside turned out really nice. It's just great. So definitely recommend this pattern. Find some really comfortable needles though to, to use. Okay, so that's it for finished objects. So after I finished, I should say, I haven't had a ton of knitting time because of the Shawlography Mystery Knit Along. And so the first weekend when, for, when Clue One came out, I was able to knit Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then I had off Monday. So I was able to get through that first clue pretty quickly. And then I had the rest of the week to kind of knit on whatever I wanted. So that's when I finished these two things. <laughs> and so the next weekend, my sister came in town with her family. My dad turned 80 this month. So we had just a family get together and um, they flew in from Seattle. So they were in that whole weekend and I did not have any knitting time. So that pushed me behind for sure. And the thing that I don't like about the Stephen West MCAL, which is why I may not do it in the future, is I'm not a monogamous knitter. But to keep up with this, I have to be. And that's really difficult for me. So, and I can't let go. Like I can't let go and just be like, I'll just finish it when I get to it. I can't, like I want to finish it by the end of next week. I wanna be done. So, but it definitely eats into the rest of my knitting time. And that's probably the only downside for me. So, but the first week, if I would have had, if I didn't have a job or kids, I'm sure that I could <laughs> get a lot of knitting done, you know, but I have a job and kids. And so I have limited knitting time. Um, so unfortunately, these are the only things that have, that got finished and I barely got anything else done. Like I really want to start the love note uh, sweater so I can join the Love Note Love Cal and I just haven't had time. So I did do a gauge swatch so I know what needles I'm going to use but that's as far as I've gotten. So I'll go into another Cal that I'm joining. <laughs> I am joining um, Four City Knit Girls. They are doing a dust off your knits Cal so it's very similar to the one from piece for that Michael did for piece for piece crafting. So I chose three things that I'm pulling out of hibernation to work on and hopefully enter into this cal. So to enter this cal on Ravelry, you have to put your um, in progress photo in one thread. And then if you finish it, you get to put it in the second thread. So that's pretty cool for accountability. So I chose three things, and this is the first thing I chose. And these are the Katuza socks by April Garwood. And I had one sock finished. So the texture on this is so pretty. And I just did a fish lips kiss heel. So that'll be easy. The yarn I'm using is Ancestral Yarns and the 8020 sock in the color Rufus. It's very fuzzy yarn. I do like it. But I think um, this is the sack that it doesn't have a ton. Well, it, actually it does. I think it's gonna, if any of either of those two socks between this and the simple skip socks are tight, it might be this one, but I really don't think either of them are. I love how the yarn is pooling and striping. It's just great. So when I picked this one up, I had just done the ribbing for the second sock. So that's where I was. So I'm not very far. I just started the pattern re repeats. This one's gonna take a while. It's a fiddly pattern, although it's totally worth every stitch. And um, I really enjoy doing it, but it takes a little bit more concentration and it's just a little bit more fiddly, but I love it. And these are gonna be gorgeous socks when they're done. So. That's the first thing that I entered into that cal. <sighs> I feel like I've worked on these a lot and not gotten very much done. So I think that's why I'm a little worried. <laughs> um, and then 
the other sock that I entered into that cal, and then I did a sweater too. So we'll see. I don't know if I'll get all three of them done, but these are the. Ooh, I may have to turn the page. The tree farm socks by Natalie Sheldon, um, and I think. I'm pretty sure she does Remembrance's pottery mugs, which I have one of her mugs. I started this last year right after Christmas and I stopped because Christmas was over. So I'm hoping to get back into this. It looks really big. I mean, these will be big kind of slouchy roomy socks for me, but I just love how they're turning out. I'm not really experienced with color work. Um, Looks like I might have gone up a needle size even. I can't see anything in the sliding on my on the needles, but these look like thicker needles. So maybe I shouldn't have gone up a needle size. I'm not really sure, um, but it's fine. Even if they're big, I'll wear them. Um, and I love, I loved working on these and I'm really excited to get back um, to them. I'm using yarn from Murray & Co. Wool Goods. It's their classic sock in evergreen and festive frost. And I bought the yarn when they were selling like kits for this pattern because I, I loved it so much. And this is in this awesome bag by Chestnut Fibers, my knitting and figure skating sheep. Okay, are you guys ready to see the mystery knit along? <laughs> So if you don't want to see it, I will try not to spend too much time on it. Um, you can just go forward a little bit. Um, I will start by showing my colors, my yarn all together, and then I will show the shawl. I kind of feel like either you're doing the knit along and you're fine with spoilers or you're not doing the knit along but you and you don't care. That's kind of how I feel people think, but I could be really wrong. <laughs> so these are my colors. Um, starting here, this is a leading men fibers, um, in heirloom is the color. This is ex libris fibers in iron giant. It's like a gray with some cool rust in there. This is a plucky knitter one hit wonder. So it's kind of a one of a kind. This is leading men fiber art showstopper base in haunted wood. And this is another Leading Men Fiber Arts, and this one is um, a director's interpretation, which I'm pretty sure is a one of a kind. Super, super deep blue, which I love deep blues. So I'm gonna put those away, and I'm going to show the shawl now. So if you don't wanna see, please look away. Um, here she is. It's pretty cool. I, I'm not gonna lie, I really like it. Um, I love knitting it 100%, except I also start to dislike thing anything when it gets over 400 stitches. So it is getting to that point where I'm like, I'm not so sure, I love you, but I'm still really enjoying it. So it starts with this teeny tiny little wedge here, and then you have these, these cool short rows section here, slip stitches, these like I-cord things, another slip stitch section. This was probably my least favorite part was doing these welts. However, they're cool. <laughs> then there's some triangles, some slip stitch triangles. And then there's this short row section that takes forever. And then you do that on both sides. And then um, I just did rows one and two <laughs> of the next clue, of clue three. So I'm just about to start, for me, the mesh, but for most people, it's the brioche section. I'm also hoping that by doing the mesh section, I'll get through it a little bit quicker. So that's, that's it so far. This is how the colors are playing together. If I knew how things were gonna go, I think I would have changed the gray and the yellow out so that the stripes would have been with gray and then the slip section, this section would have been with gray, but I like it just fine. Um, it's not so crazy that it bothers me. And really for me, it's the process of knitting the shawl. That's a lot of fun and learning 
the new techniques and you know even though I said I didn't really love doing the welt section I've never done anything like that before I mean and then there's bobbles I mean so there's tons of texture in this thing um, we'll see what happens when it's all done <laughs> so I'm pretty sure I actually have no no idea. I was gonna say I pretty much think that the last clue is gonna to be tons of knitting back and forth, but I I actually have no idea. I, I I shouldn't even guess. I have no idea where this is going. It's so fun. I'm not stressing about it too much. <laughs> um, I think what happened. So where I think I got a little off, I misread the directions during the bobble section. So I. Instead of undoing a bobble, I did like a, I fudged it. Then I had to fudge at the end. And then when I did the short rows, I think things were just a little bit off and now they're a little bit more off. So I'll figure it out and it'll be fine. Just have to get to the right stitch count eventually. <laughs> um, so that's where I'm at. It's going well. Like I said, I'm hoping to finish it in like the next week, week and a half because I don't, want it hanging over my head <laughs> for a long time. Okay, I am next going to go into some sweaters, which is exciting. So um, I have put a few more rounds in on my Throw Over by Andrea Mowry. Not a ton, but a few. So this is the Throw Over by Andrea Mowry. I copied um, Laura from I Heart You. Um, I colored her, I colored, I copied her color palette hundred percent. So here it is. I split for the sleeves and I knit about, I don't know. I'm actually probably only have like five more inches maybe to go and then the sleeves and then it's done. So this I want to finish by Christmas. So I should definitely be able to do that. Um, uh oh, dropped a stitch. Sorry, just don't want it to unravel too much. So anyway, I want this to wear by Christmas time, um, which should definitely be a possibility when I'm finished with the Stephen West knit along. So anyway, the, the yarns I'm using are all from Knit Picks, Wool of the Andes. So here's my palette. This is Blossom Heather, Brass Heather, Fjord Heather, and Onyx Heather. And I love the colors. I I think I said last episode like six times, I'm not really a pink person and I kept pulling out pink. I think I'm a little bit of a pink person. I mean, I I just love how this looks. I think it's really great and I think it's gonna look really nice on me. My color work does look a little lumpy, but I think that'll be fine once I block it. I've, I've knit color work. I don't really do it a lot, so I'll see. <laughs> I'll see what happens when I block it. I think it'll be fine. I'm not worried at all. And so this uh, sweater is living in, bursting out of this bag by stitching the high notes, um, which I wonder if it would fit better in my new bag. We'll see. This is kind of a summer bag, right? So I don't know if I'll switch it out, but it's a possibility. Okay, and then the other sweater. So this is a languishing whip, and I probably should have checked to see when I casted it on. Oh, actually, I did. I remember now. I casted this on October 20th, 2020. So for those of you who that's sparking any memories for, that was about a week after lockdown <laughs> for the pandemic. Like, once the whole world kind of stopped was in October of 2020. So I, which is weird because I have no recollection of working on this at all at that point in time. Cause it doesn't seem that long ago. <laughs> I just don't re remember doing this. <laughs> but anyway, this is the No Frills Cardigan by Petite Knit. I am, oh, I love this. I want to finish this. I need to have it. It, so pretty and it's so so fuzzy and I love everything about it so this yarn let me tell you I this is lavender loon yarn and it's a sparkle yarn and it doesn't really look sparkly 
That's because she put four skeins of this yarn on her Instagram one day and said, I'm willing to sell these four skeins of Shadow Singer color on the sparkle base for $40. She said, I killed the sparkle so it doesn't really sparkle. And I was like, oh, I'll take it. I'll take that. And um, so I got this yarn for $40 and which is a significant discount. And I love her yarn a lot. And it's just so pretty. I mean, you can kind of see the sparkle. I mean, it's not totally dead, but it's very muted. I love the colors in this. It's just, everything's very muted. And then adding, oh my God. Oh, there's a mess in here. I better. Oof, we're gonna have to figure out what's happening in here. But anyway, <laughs> sorry, there's a big knot in my bag and I don't know what to do. But anyway, I'm holding it together with Rowan Kid Silk Haze in the steel color. So I really love how this is coming together and I don't know why I stopped working on it. This is what's happening in my bag. Um, but I love it and so I'm hoping to finish this one before the end of the year. So if I finish this and if I finish the throw over and I finish a love note, which I mean, I know that's pretty ambitious because it's almost November, but if I finish all three of those, I will have reached my goal of knitting six sweaters. It's not the six to 10 that I was hoping to, but it's, it would at least, it would at least meet the bare minimum. And for goodness sake, don't we sometimes need to meet any goal? <laughs> So I think I'm going to really try to do that. Um, I also have a lot of other things I want and need to knit in the next couple months. So, oh my God, I'm going to spend some time tonight doing a little detangling of this bag. This isn't a Nautica bag, but I have no idea where it came from. Everything about this project is gone. Like I, I, I don't have, I'm not even like recovering memories of any of this. Like I, I don't remember any part of this, but I'm excited and I think it's gonna be fun. The only thing I do remember is that I think I have two more rounds before I split for the sleeves, but I don't remember putting it in a bag. I don't really remember working on it, which is really weird, right? Anyway, <laughs> that was a weird time. It was a weird time. Everybody was home and like we didn't have I mean, we weren't really leaving the house, so it was a weird time. So <laughs> anyway, glad those times are over. And my last work in progress is I started my daughter's Christmas socks. There's not much to see. I decided to make her shorty socks. I haven't made her short socks yet, and I thought this would be a nice time to do it. So this is Nomadic Yarns in the colorway of the child. So if you like The Mandalorian or Star Wars, uh, Baby Yoda, this is what that color is inspired by. So I literally just turn the heel. So if you've never seen a sock with a heel flap and gusset in progress, here it is. I just turned the heel. So now I'm gonna start picking up stitches to decrease. And um, yeah, these should go fast. And I need something to go fast. I think everybody might be getting shorty socks for Christmas because I don't have time to knit long ones this year. And I do not have this in a bag yet. So I think I'm being optimistic and thinking that once I finish one of the other two pairs of socks, these will go in there, but who am I kidding? <laughs> these will probably just stay on my desk. So that's it for works in progress and finished objects. So that was pretty good. I'm doing good on time today. I'm really happy and proud of myself for that. Um, all right. Let me just make sure. And then that is just a vanilla. I'm making up the pattern. I just looked up a free pattern on how to do a heel flap and gusset and um yeah and now I'm just going to be knitting the rest of the time so no texture nothing like that okay so after last time I know that I said that I was kind of in a reading rut I got out of it real quick um I read three books that I really enjoyed uh, I'm definitely in a genre right now I'm definitely leaning young adult I'm leaning kind of fantasy and I'm okay with it because it's bringing me joy. Thanks to anybody who left 
um, suggestions for reading, I will always take them. So if you finished a book that you really loved, always please feel free to comment that below because I will always take reading suggestions. Um, I love to read really almost all kinds of books. I will, there's not a lot I won't read. Um, maybe like a Western. I don't know that I'm really into like cowboys. However, if it's a compelling enough story, maybe I could do it. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, let me just grab a couple books. All right. Oh, sorry. I, I think I like have things organized well, and then I find myself reaching a lot. Um, so my bedtime book that I finished um, is Aurora Rising by Oh, Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. They also did the Illuminae Chronicles, which I only read the first book of, but I will be going back to finish the series. I loved this book. So I was chatting with, oh, what's her name? Nina of This Old Knit, because she said she started Illuminae, and I was like, I loved Illuminae. And she said, I wanted to read it because I loved the Aurora Chronicles. So I was like, oh my gosh, now I have to read this. And I am in love. I I love it. It's so good. It's really hard to explain. <laughs> but the thing that they do so well in their books is they really develop their characters really well. So this is a squad of seven characters, six or seven. And at the beginning, you know, they all have their own point of view. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to be able to tell anybody apart. And I like by the end that they're all like beloved to you. Like they do a really good job with characterization. Um, it's just a really fun, interesting. I don't know. I liked everything about it. So much so that I started listening to Aurora Burning, which is book two, immediately after I finished my last Audible book because I want to stay up to date with this. And then the final book is coming out next month, so I will be ready for it. I, I love it so much I don't want it to end. So very good. And then this it's nice, it's young adult, and I liked it. So I'm gonna give this to my daughter to read. She doesn't like to read as much as me, which is really sad, but um, eventually sometime, maybe she'll wanna pick it up. And then on Audible, I finished The Night She Disappeared by Lisa Jewell. And I really liked that one too. It was really different, uh, kind. it was totally different from Aurora Rising. It was set, like a more contemporary fiction. And this is the second Lisa Jewell book that I read. The other one that I read was The Family Upstairs. And so she, do, she definitely has a formula and I'm fine with formulas. Um, she always has, I shouldn't say always, I've only read two of her books, but she seems to have two stories going on at once. So the one that was happening in current time is like a woman that moves to this town and dis discovers there's a mystery where a, two teenagers disappeared a year, about a year ago, and then she's sort of being pulled into the mystery. And then it goes back to tell the story of the two teenagers, and eventually the two stories come together and you kind of figure out the ending. Um, the ending was a little, I don't know, it wasn't my favorite, but I also feel like it's really difficult to do a great ending. So um, I thought it was a great book and I would definitely recommend it if you like that kind of mystery uh, contemporary fiction book. It was great. Um, she seems to be a popular author, so I would definitely recommend that one. Although I was looking uh, <laughs> at her book titles and one was like, the night she left, the night she disappeared. Like it's a lot of like the night ofs and I was like, oh, let's mix it up. Cause then I couldn't remember which one I read for a minute. And then the other book I listened to on Audible that I really liked too was called uh, The Queen Will Betray You. The Queen Will Betray You <laughs> by Sarah Henning. And I listened to The Princess Will Save You a couple months ago. And I really like this series. The first book is sort of, um, it's sort of a retelling of The Princess Bride, but very different. And this one, so they have kind of like the same feel as The Princess Bride with like how the speech is. Sometimes they'll say like, as you wish or the pit of de despair, but it doesn't mirror exactly. It just has some similarities. And I really like the characters again. I like the storytelling style. I like the narrator when I listen. I 
it, it's been a fun ride. So there's one more book coming out next year called, I think The King Will Kill You. <laughs> I also like how she names her books. It's pretty fun that I'm going to be reading that as well. I'll probably pre-order it with one of my Amazon credits so or Audible credits so that I know that I am getting it because that's another series that I'm another series that I have been enjoying. So my voice is starting to go. I'm starting to muddle everything together. So I'm going to finish up the, so I already mentioned that I'm listening to Aurora burning on audible right now and really enjoying it. I think I'm going to burn through it <laughs> because I'm really, really liking the, uh, the characters and I like where the story is going. And then for my bedtime book, I have the nature of witches, which just seemed like a nice, uh, book for this time of year. She, I'm on chapter two. Oh, three. I, I read two chapters, so I'm not very far at all, but I will say a big draw for me was how beautiful this book is. If you're going to buy a book, you might as well buy a beautiful book, right? Um, so I hope I enjoy this. I thought it was young adult. Um, I don't know. Actually, I don't really recall <laughs> what I thought when I bought it. Um, I think I assumed it was young adult when I picked it up to read it recently and then it already kind of had a little bit of a adult scene so I have no idea I'm gonna see where this takes me but I'm enjoying it so far so that's all I have today wow what happened to my hair sorry about that <laughs> thank you very 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 much for joining me I really appreciate it if you could like subscribe tell a friend leave book recommendations. Um, let me know what you're working on. Are you working on socks? Are you working on any holiday gifts? Do you celebrate a different holiday that you do gift giving for? Um, yeah, just let me know what's going on in your life. I really appreciate you showing up and, and checking out what I've been working on. So thanks so much. And I'll try to get back here in a couple of weeks with a finished Stephen West shawl. That's my goal. All right. Take care. Bye. Happy knitting.